What's going on internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today we're going to be having a look at the second distribution in my series of you know, distributions that are easy for the new user that, let's be honest, copy Mac OS X, or as it's known today as just OS X. And that of course would be Lunanix. <laughs> So Lunanix OS has been around for a little while now and it's matured very nicely. Uh, if you want to have a look at my previous review, I'll slap an annotation here. And this release is of course based on the, the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu and it basically pulls together a very, very, very nice selection of applications here out of the box, combined with a nice theme, icon set, and somewhat controversially, GNOME Classic by default because you're going to notice that there's no GNOME shell here, there's no fancy compositing effects, it's very simple GNOME Classic. Uh, so for anybody who's used GNOME 2 before, you know what you're doing here. Uh, you've got menus, you've got applications and places, only difference is of course we don't have that third menu option uh, which you've got bundled into, the, uh, bundled into the menu here. So you've got system tools, administration preferences and you've got a list of all your favorite things. Now. Uh, I do like this, yes, I'm definitely going to say that, but at the same time, it is uh, I do miss the keyboard navigation abilities of, uh, of the more modern distributions. So I definitely will say that it would be nice if they could include a, a keyboard launcher like Gnome Do or Synapse uh, out of the box, because really, uh, in order to compete or even uh, you know appear to be competing with uh, the modern distributions, including OS X, you really need that instant type and search function, because that, that, that's fairly fundamental to what an operating system is nowadays. Apart from that, Lunanix bundles in everything that you're going to want to need, uh, but it's a very tasteful selection of applications. It's not a huge ISO, it's about 1.4 gigs, so it's not mammoth, uh, but they do give you a nice healthy selection here. And by the way, if you're wondering, yes, my voice does sound a bit huskier uh, than usual simply because I've had a cold for the last couple of days and I haven't been doing too much. Well, no, that's, that's actually a complete lie. I've been incredibly busy, but you'll have to forgive me as we press on. So you can see here on the bottom, we do have Docky, which is uh, your main task management panel here. And you can, of course, customize Docky to the way you like it if you can target the right click correctly. And you can see here we've got different themes that you can use, uh, different docklets, different helpers. Uh, all of which have nice little sound effects when you click on them, simply because they've also bundled in the Mac OS X sound effects library in here as well. So when you click on stuff, when you log in, it's going to sound very much like the OS X. I can't believe how old school that just sounded, putting an article in front of OS X. Moving on, let's have a quick look at some applications, all right? So we've got accessories, and now that's the other thing I really want to call out with, uh, with Lunanix uh, OS, is that they really do a nice job here of naming the applications, not by confusing names that only uh, open source freaks are familiar with. They really simplify it down to what uh, the average user is going to see it as. Archive, what do you think that does? Calculator, file manager, finder, help, map viewer, notes, screenshot, terminal, text editor, all of these names are all incredibly easy to understand and I think this is a really simple step that uh, distributions can make to make it much much easier for new users because really that was one of the things that boggled my mind. Uh, so you can see here under the under the sound and video for example there are many different uh, titles here of names which which let's be honest can be pretty confusing for a new user. You've got Desktop Recorder which is GTK Record My Desktop, Disperna which is Brasero, DVD Maker which is Bon Bono or something like that, Kazam, we've got XMBC, we've got Movie Player, we've got Rhythmbox, we've got uh, the Cheese Photo Booth. All of these names would be quite confusing for a new user if you hadn't seen them before. However, they've simplified it, they've simplified it very nicely here just by putting what the application does. So well done on the Linux team for that because uh, really it's just a very simple step that makes it so much easier. Now you'll notice that I did point out a few applications here. With, a, with the exception of Kazam, all of the rest of these applications come out of the box uh, and they really give you a nice selection here. There's really nothing that I would want to install here on top of it, apart from possibly Caden Live because I can't get away from it. They do have the video editor PTV making a debut as a default video editor once again uh, because now it does have a pretty decent uh, uh, effects library and you've got some pretty nice tools here as well as so you can configure the clips quite nicely. And from what I can tell, PTV works fairly decently now. Bumping up to the top of the page under graphics, we've got the, of course, LibreOffice drawing. We've got image editor, which is in fact GIMP. Uh, so you do have GIMP installed by default, which is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, it is, of course, the, of course, the older version. But it's also worth mentioning that we do have Pinter here as well, which is a more simplified image editor uh, that was rumored to be uh, going under, but uh, since it's, uh, it's taken on another maintainer, it is still alive and kicking. Very nice, it's very similar to paint.net on the Windows side of things. 
We've got, of course, Photo Manager, which is shot well, Image Viewer, Default GNOME stuff, and Simple Scan. Under Internet, we have a Torrent Client, we have Desktop Sharing, Dropbox by default, love it. Live Hero for the Feed Reader, Chromium Web Browser, IRC, and Messaging. Office, of course, LibreOffice, and Evolution making, uh, making an appearance here as well, very nice for your mail and calendar. You've got Science, which you've got a very interesting uh, basic 256 application here. Basically, you can uh, create little scripts and then run them and give and it can give you the text output and the graphics output as well. Very nice if you're learning about computers. And then, like I said before, a lot of the good stuff in here, which uh, a lot of which I would definitely approve of because I've used it before. You get Audacity. You get the sound juicer, audio CD extractor, you get the sound recorder, you get a sound converter, you get a music player, media center, really, you really get the whole kit and caboodle of applications here, but it doesn't take up that much space. So very well done on behalf of the Lunanix team. Very nice app selection, definitely 10 out of 10 in that regard. And then of course, you've also got the GNOME tweak tool here available as well. So you can uh, customize the shell, the fonts, the files. This is just basically your tweaking tool to make it uh, look and feel the way you want it to. And you can see here by default they do have their own kind of icon theme here, largely based on the Faenza icon set with some blue folders here. And the window controls do look remotely like OS X as well. Bear in mind, you do of course have the menus in the windows this time, not up on the top panel. And it's also worth mentioning that you do actually get a lot of the indicator applets that Ubuntu gets up in this GNOME panel as well, so you don't get any limitations uh, because you're running the GNOME Classic version by default. And something else I just noticed that the feed reader is integrated into the messaging menu. Very nice indeed. Let's have a quick poke around in system settings because most of us are familiar with what this looks like. But for those who don't, it does look very nice in here indeed. It's very colorful, very simple. Uh, and really, I don't see any problems uh, with, with new users navigating their way around. After all, that is what this distribution is aimed towards. And also one other thing that definitely is worth mentioning is that Play on Linux comes installed by default. Play on Linux is a fantastic wrapper for the uh, for running Windows applications under Linux. Uh, so basically, you can it, it gives you a nice step by step process of how to add and install uh, add and install your Windows software on Linux and get it working under Wine. Wine, of course, being the compatibility layer that allows Windows applications to run on Linux. Now, of course, it would be nice to see some Compass effects here as well, which you could probably get working with a little bit of tweaking. But overall, this system is very, very nice. As far as software management is concerned, you do, of course, get the Ubuntu Software Center. So there's nothing really to write home about there. The software Center works. It's not distinguishing itself in any way like, uh, like Pear OS was. So it's a solid choice. You also get a uh, computer janitor here, which is, of course, Bleachbit. Please use with caution. But if you're not running as root, then you should be fine. And also, I will, I will mention that it does prompt you to back up after using this operating system for some time. So that's also good to see that it's got some built-in backup capabilities in there as well. Despite the fact that this uh, distribution release was delayed by quite some time, it's really good to see the way it's come together because this operating system is very much presenting itself as a viable alternative for those looking for a Mac OS X type distribution, uh, but they're wanting just to experiment with, with Linux first of all and free software. It's a very good uh, first step into the world of free software. So I definitely recommend this is the one that you pass around to your friends looking to try an alternative operating system for the first time if they like the idea of an OS X type desktop. So at the moment, this distribution is definitely ranking uh, at the top of the OS X type distros. But of course, we're going to be back with Ping iOS 12.04, uh, the long-term support release as well, and we'll see how that stacks up. Now, outside of the distributions for new users, I'm also wanting to have a look at some very interesting Debian-based distributions that have come out recently, including Solus OS 1.2 and AV Linux 6.0. Having said all that, uh, I am going to be away for the next two weeks out of town, and then I am going on holidays. So it will be interesting to see how all that turns out. I will try to be putting up some videos uh, every now and again, so hopefully we'll still see some app reviews, some Android reviews. Speaking of which, I got the Nexus 7 tablet, so thank you very much for your suggestions, ladies and gents. So you can expect a review of that coming in September. But in the meantime, we'll try to throw out, uh, we'll continue with the gaming series and also with the uh, with the OS X distribution series. So thank you all for watching and subscribing and liking and sharing and doing all the stuff that you do as a fantabulous audience and I shall catch you all next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, the good news is that this app store is very, very colorful and it's very bright, very user-friendly. Uh, I think this has got to be one of the best, uh, got to be one of the best software management programs out there. It'd be great.